Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of Stratswatch. So here we go again, we're going to bring you up to date with all of the latest stratospheric developments in terms of stratospheric temperatures at 10 HPA, 60 degrees north over the Arctic and over the North Pole. We're going to have a look at uh, forecast data for stratospheric temperatures over the Pole and we'll have a little review of one of the colder winters in uh, more recent years from 1990 to 1991 for uh, this particular Strat Um Now sit back, relax, enjoy, and enjoy. I'll talk you through episode five of Strat Watch in about just say it could be a very busy day at Gazworth is today. So after this, we've got Jeremy Friday and 10 to 14 day coming up. I'm live streaming for channel members at 6 p.m. Probably going to try and squeeze in Snow Watch when I get doing the channel member live stream. And uh, who knows, you may have a pub run or I may be <laughs> ready to go and collapse in a heat uh, by uh, late this evening after all of that. So loads and loads and loads of contents coming up. Uh, content coming up, please like, share. And subscribe. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Strat to Watch will return to Wednesdays from next week. And that will help me on a Friday, I can tell you. Uh, right, let's start off with the current situation in terms of temperature at 10 HPA over the Arctic and the North Pole. So uh, the black line shows how temperatures have been performing through the season so far and where we currently are versus the uh, grey line which is the long-term 30-year average. So as we begin the new year of 2025, we're actually a bit colder than average at uh, 10 HPA. You would expect that would be somewhere around the mid-minus 60s, now about minus 65. We're actually under minus 70. So we are quite cold with the temperature at 10 HPA and colder than normal. Go a little bit lower down to 30 HPA. <coughs> So sorry, everyone. There we are even colder. We're down to about minus 81, minus 82. We should be about minus 75 this time of the year. So um, colder than average at both 10 HPA and also 30 HPA. That is probably helping to connect to a stronger than average stratospheric polar vortex. So, uh, have a quick look at the latest GFS temperature forecast for 10 HPA. The blue, purple colours beat of the cold temperatures, of course, in the stratosphere. Polar vortex at its roots, essentially at 10 HPA. Now, over the next few days, we are going to get quite a significant warming developing over Siberia. This is sure to be SSW, but it is a very significant warming up we're seeing that over Siberia, but not impacting the uh, North Pole to any uh, sort of great degree. Uh, that gets us to about the 10th of length of January. Then the warming is trying to penetrate in towards the uh, pole and the polar vortex for blue purple colours come just a little bit displaced out towards Canada and uh, northern parts of the Atlantic. In the more extended range, we look like that. So the coldest temperatures then get pushed down in towards <coughs> so sorry everyone, the uh, North Atlantic and Northern Europe going down to minus 88 and it's cold. It's that's really, really, really cold. That's the temperature uh, there. Over pole, probably seeing the um, temperature lifting up a little bit. That's returning back closer to average mid minus 60. But most of this warming still being kept over the Siberian and also uh, Pacific side of the Arctic. Now that uh, warming eases off then into the second half of January, before another warming begins to uh, develop by the 19th of January. And that one looks like it's starting to penetrate into the North Pole itself. A proper displacement event then taking place of the stratospheric polar vortex into the North Atlantic and also into Northern uh, Europe and uh, Siberia as well. So that might be enough to uh, certainly weaken the... Um, Zona wing quite a lot and, you know, uh, put the PV under a lot of pressure. Whether that would actually produce a reversal of Zona wing, probably not. It would need to be a little bit more intense, I think, that warming to create an actual reversal of Zona wings. And that is, you know, uh, SSW, essentially, a sudden stratospheric uh, warming event will be. A reversal of zona winds at 10 HPA, 60 degrees or so. Probably just a bit shy of, uh, of, of a technical SSW there. But it certainly is putting the PV under a lot of pressure. However, it's a very long way out. That's the 19th of January. 
384 hours. So whether that actually verifies, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Right, so let's have a look at uh, the more extensive uh, stratospheric temperature forecast from the ECMW for the next six weeks. So starting off with uh, week one temperature anomalies in the stratosphere. This is from the 6th to the 13th of January. We see um, this is warming we've just been looking at over Siberia. Quite a significant warming, but short of a technical SSW type um, temperature level. Uh, that gets us through to um, week two, which is the 13th 20 to the 20th of January. Those very cold temps are being shoved down into uh, northern Europe then as this warming uh, goes around the edges of the palm but not impacting the North Pole directly. Um, that's week three. It's the uh, 20th, 27th of January. That warming is easing off then. Cold stratospheric temperature with a displacement event into northern uh, Europe and also uh, western Russia. That's week four. By then, it looks like the polar vortex is beginning to move back toward the pole. Uh, and still one in business. Then into February, week five, 3rd to the 10th of February, and week 6, 10th to 17th of February. Um, you know, there's no sign of an SSW here with the ECM temperature over the next six weeks. The most intense warming is in this first week, and it is short of, uh, of an SSW-type temperature level. Uh, Zone of Wind forecast the next six weeks from the ECM looking like that. So we're currently stronger than average, and Zone of Winds are going to strengthen further and become record-breakingly strong, actually, through the second week of uh, January. Despite that, we're going to see considerable amounts of northern blocking, though. So uh, what it is important to remember is that um, sometimes, even though you might have a very strong zone of wind in the stratosphere, you can get a decoupling of that in the troposphere and still get northern blocking, even without an SSW. And we're going to have that coming up over the uh, next week or so as well. So that is always something to keep in mind. You do not need, we do not need uh, a sudden stratospheric warming event to get northern blocking and cold conditions into, you know, in, in, into northern Europe. Uh, anyway, very strong stratospheric temperatures over next week or so, weakening towards the middle of January. But see the thick blue line here, which is the ensemble mean, is still above the long term. 30-year average, which is the red line. So, again, there's no evidence, there's no particular sign of a, a technical sudden stratospheric warming event taking place over the uh, next six weeks. We've got a few outlier members that are reversing. So, the winds will always have a few of those into February. Um, but they are very much in the minority. Most of those ensemble blue members are keeping zone winds uh, much stronger. An average, so the wait for whether we get an SSW for this uh, winter continues. And we'll keep you updated. Next track, watch I say, will be next Wednesday. Back to its Wednesday time slot. This season's rap watch, we're uh, looking at historical winters as well. This week, we're going to look at 1919-1991. I'm sure a lot of you remember that winter had a snow event in December, but had a particularly intense freeze-up through uh, the first half of February of 1991. Let's see how that winter develops from a stratospheric point of view. So we start off on the 1st of December with these cold temperatures at 10 HK, but there has been a bit of a warming here over towards the Pacific side of the Arctic, which is slightly unusual for so early in the season. That's the 5th of December. Again, the blue colours, one of the truly entrenched cold stratospheric temperatures with pretty strong polar vortex. This is the day of a mid snowstorm on the 8th of December uh, 1990. That certainly didn't happen before any particular warming up of stratosphere. We've still got those uh, cold temperatures there at 10 HK. Let's go a bit further on into the middle of December 1990. Getting ever cold with a stratospheric temperature down to minus 80 um, in the uh, North Atlantic there. Let's move closer to uh, Christmas. We've got a bit of a warming happening over Siberia here, the far east of Siberia anyway, but still really not impacted pole at all. Those cold temperatures continue with uh, an increasingly strong polar vortex. It's a very stormy Christmas to New Year that we had in uh, 1990. I remember it quite well. Very mild, but also very stormy between Christmas and the New Year of 1990. That's how we look on Christmas Day. Cold temperatures uh, maintained over the stratosphere. And this is New Year's Eve. 
of 1990. So now I'm starting to see something a little bit more interesting. A woman is beginning to happen over America and out into the Atlantic. It's like an unusual place for uh, stratospheric warmings to begin. Let's go through to New Year's Day of 1991. See how things are looking then. So we still have the uh, cold temperatures at 10 8 p.m. in the stratosphere over the North Pole. Looking a little bit raggedy, I have to say. It's not a particularly convincingly strong polar vortex that we see here, I don't think. Um, we've got a warming over eastern America out into the Atlantic and a little bit towards Siberia. Let's go a few days further on to the 5th of January. Ah, well, now things are starting to look very interesting. So a significant stratospheric warming is happening over America and in, up to Canada and also out into the North Atlantic as well. Still not impacting the pole directly, but an unusual place to start off uh, a major warming. Normally, we know they happen over Siberia, but you do get exceptions to the rule, and uh, this is one of those examples. 7th of January, the warming is intensifying further and starting to head up towards Greenland. We now begin to stretch the polar vortex at its uh, roots in the stratosphere over North Pole. Though it is a very cold temperature over Pole, down to uh, minus 80 there at 10 HPA. 11th of January, check that out. Very, very significant warming of the stratosphere has uh, taken place then. And it's centering over Greenland, which is a very unusual uh, type scenario. At uh, this point, uh, it hasn't gone particularly cold across North, uh, Northern Europe, but it is like, I think, like getting high pressure, not frosty uh, weather through uh, January of 1991. The big freeze hasn't yet set in, though. Displacement event of the polar vortex and more towards the Pacific side of uh, the Arctic and the North Pole, if anything. So, again, that is quite unusual. Normally, you won't get displacement event. Um, it happens because the warming starts over Siberia and displaces the polar vortex to sort of Canada, North America, North Atlantic, and Northern Europe. Uh, so it normally, uh, the displacement of the polar vortex is normally on this side and the warming is like on the other side. So this is a very unusual uh, uh, stratospheric warming that we see here in uh, January 1991. That warming then starting to move out into Northern Europe, beginning to uh, ease off the uh, gas as well. The um, polar vortex now begin to move back round towards, uh, stratospheric polar vortex now begin to move back round towards America and uh, Canada as well. 17th of January looks like that. We're back to, no, so despite that, big attack that we have from uh, America and uh, Canada on the polar vortex. It is still well and truly in business. It was only displaced with them and at that point it did not reverse the zone. I mean, I it wasn't even technical SSW. But it was a, a very significant warming focused around green. Whether that played a part in the developments in February is quite difficult to say. Uh, warming is over Siberia now in a more typical place. Let's go through to the 19th of January. So then the warming is beginning to start trying to penetrate into all the uh, North Pole. Notice the PV now sort of getting displaced into um, North America, Canada, Northern Europe. That's a more typical type uh, displacement event of the uh, polar vortex. As I say, that's the 20th of January. And then we go through to, let's go through to the 22nd of uh, January. And um, so we see the PV now being pushed, the uh, stratospheric polar vortex now being pushed into Northern Europe, western parts of Russia, with this uh, warming through the pole itself and down in towards Canada and parts of Greenland uh, also. Uh, still just a displacement event, but I don't think the zone of wind had reversed up to uh, this point. That's the 24th of January. So the polar vortex is looking very much shrunken with all of these repeated attacks. It's rather um, rather than like being a dramatic single warming that kills the polar vortex. This winter is like death by a thousand cuts of the stratospheric polar vortex. Uh, really, with it being moved around continuously 
by these uh, by these warming events that are generally short of an SSW. Now, as the 26th uh, of January, let's go back to the 25th. Um, now, as the 25th of January, you see the one beginning to get going now over Siberia, and you just saw the 26th. So that's the 26th. Now, suddenly, a very intense sudden stratospheric warming event is taking place. This is the one that reverses the zone of wind. It's about two weeks before the big freeze hits uh, the UK. So, you know, it's about bang on target. Check that out. Uh, that's 27th of January, 1991. The warming absolutely focused over the pole itself. Still just a displacement event, though. We haven't split the PV, but it is very much shrunk um, and displaced into uh, the North Atlantic and into Western parts of Europe as well, but what an SS what an SSW uh, that is! So we get a reversal of zonal winds. A technical SSW sun traffic one of them does take place during the uh, winter of uh, 1990 1991. It happens about a week to ten days before the big freeze hits most parts of uh, Europe. That's the 28th of the uh, uh, January 91. We've reversed the zonal wind now. But the one thing we do miss with this SSW is that we don't split the PV. It just stays a displacement of them with the PV still intact and displaced and shrunken, but uh, still intact into the North Atlantic and into Northern parts of Europe. That perhaps explains why uh, this SSW was. It did get a tropospheric response. We did get the big freeze through early uh, February 19, or the first half of February 91. Second half of February reverted back to mild condition. It was a particularly long-lasting uh, the spell of northern blocking. That's the final day of January uh, 91, so the uh, SSW is easing off now, but of course the damage has been done, and now at this point we're waiting for the uh, tropospheric response into February 91. That's how we are looking. Number one, beginning to gather pace here over eastern parts of America. That's the 5th of February. So maybe we do split PV. I, I didn't think we did split the PV, but perhaps we do split the PV in early February 19, because now we've got two loads of blue here, one going off into Canada, North America, a double lot splintering off in certain parts of Europe. So it looks like it's more or less a, a split of the polar vortex in early February there. Regardless, at this point, we get the tropospheric response now to the SSW that happened in January. So, uh, this is where the big freeze is really setting in across much of Europe. And by the 8th of February, we're really under the car shadow with the big freeze. I can actually show you, I'll change this over and show you. Um, bah, 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 bah. Where do you want to go to that? Means that to them. Uh, yeah, so there you see it. That's the uh, that's the actual weather chart for the eighth of February. Uh, a really good Scandinavian high back into Russia. Low pressure across France and winds coming in from the east, bring that bitterly cold air in from the east. At the same time, though, over in America, it's really mild. You know, there's a bit of a heat wave going on under that ridge across many central and eastern parts of America. So, what about a situation where it's mild in America and really cold? across northern and uh, also western parts of Europe. Fun this, isn't it? A lot of fun uh, to go back and review these historic charts. Let's go to Valentine's Day. Uh, this is where the Carlsberg is starting to wind down um, now. And we see the Polar Vortex is still uh, in, in, in business to some degree, but it's certainly looking very ragged. It's been through the ringer, you know. <laughs> it's still just about hanging on, but uh, basically... It's, uh, it's very much weak um, compared to how it was early on in winter. That's the last day of February 91, the last day of winter. Both the vortex moving back to the pole and uh, beginning to try and reform itself. So, uh, interesting uh, winter. Not a split of PB for the big freeze. Anyway, but it wasn't. There was an SSW for the big freeze of February '91, and uh, a significant displacement event as well.
There we go. We'll look at another historic winter uh, next week uh, when we do uh, episode, I think it'll be episode uh, six, won't it, of Strap Watch. So uh, that will be coming up uh, for you uh, next week, and it'll be back to its Wednesday slot now that we're beyond, we're beyond Christmas of the new year. We're going to be back a little bit later on. If you enjoy the video, please like, share, subscribe, I think so, should do it back. Go back later on with Jamie Friday, 10th of 14 day, and loads and loads of content, probably slow watch as well this evening. So loads to look forward to. Keep checking back to the channel for more. But Strat Watch for this week, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.